Welcome to the Rowan Resource Podcast. This is Travis Gardner, and my guest today is Cassandra Cunningham. Cassandra offers a wealth of experience in the sport and an equally impressive desire to share it with her peers. Her career in the boat began as an undergraduate at Sacramento State University, where she frequently ended her seasons at the top of both state and conference competition. After college, she continued her career with the United States national team, claiming sixth and second place finishes at the World Championships in the lightweight quad. She has also produced numerous gold medal performances at the U.S. Rowan Elite Nationals and the prestigious Head of the Charles Regatta. Cassandra's coaching career has produced equally impressive results, and she is one of very few in the field to have extensive experience and success at the youth, college, elite, and master's levels. Most recently, she launched her business, Power of Three LLC, the manifestation of a long-held dream to leverage her experience on her own terms in service of the community. Power of Three provides independent coaching education services and consulting to Rowan organizations, close one-on-one -on -one recruiting guidance and support for youth athletes trying to select the right undergraduate institution, and most recently has found a physical home in the barn, a training destination in Philadelphia for athletes to receive focused professional instruction in water sport. For today's conversation, we're going to dive into the professional development of a coach, the intricacies of the college recruitment process, and the considerations critical to the success in that process, and I expect to share plenty of insights along the way from our own philosophies as they relate to athletes at all levels in the sport. Cassandra, thanks for sitting down with me, Dee, and especially for the invite to record here in the Thank you so much. Definitely. So nice. It's such an honor. I've never been introduced like that before. It's oh, like, yeah? Just like, wow, who is that person? Long, long earned out clay is not good. Um, so I'm excited about this conversation mm -hmm. because I think you have a perspective that the sport really needs, and I, I see there's there's really two aspects to the sport that are really lacking and are needed for the sport to grow and one of those is coaching education and for our sport especially at the youth level which i spent a significant amount of my career in most people coming into this are not trained in education they're not teachers um, they're coming into coaching because they fall in love with the sport and they're passionate about the sport and they want to share that passion with the next generation um, but there is a very much a lot of deer in the headlights type of feeling as they come in. And both in the sense of being thrown into that coaching launch with a megaphone and not a lot of instruction because the head coaches are so overwhelmed with their own responsibilities in that job, but also just the lack of, of professional development. And so a lot of the focus for those young coaches is on the the technical side, how do I teach the stroke? What should my training program look like? Um, and I sent certainly as a program director, there's a lot missing there for those for those coaches in the sense of how to conduct themselves as a professional, you know, and that a lot of those people also have no experience in kind of the private sector and the the expectation of responsibilities of an employee in that kind of environment. And rowing definitely has more of a a relaxed kind of tone to it than that. And I, I definitely see a lot of those coaches as they develop and those those weaknesses kind of magnify as they get farther in, in, in their career. And I know that a lot of your work has been in stepping in because you have an extensive background as a teacher, that's where your education is, and kind of coming into programs as a consultant and as an educator to teach those coaches not how to teach a rowing stroke, not what training program they need to be doing, but how do they conduct themselves as a professional in the sport of rowing. And so I want to kind of hand the baton to you and let you kind of talk about your focus and a lot of the a lot of the focal points that you bring when you're starting those conversations with those coaches on that theme. I think a lot of it, the professional side, kind of stems from and it roots to basically how I was raised. Mm -hmm. You know, my father was a physical education teacher and athletic director. He played basketball in high school and college, Hall of Fame. Um, my mother was an English teacher and just had a wealth of common sense. And so professionalism kind of came from etiquette, you know, eye contact, good handshake, um, how to socialize yourself in a classroom or amongst friends or in any kind of environment, how to dress. And so I think a lot of that started with the professional side of when you are professional, you communicate in a much more effective manner and you're more organized. And so one of the things I, I realized that prior proper planning 
is based off of those three areas, professionalism, organization, and communication. And you are right, my job isn't to teach them how to teach the stroke or to say this is the training plan. I think one of the things I try to, to talk to the young coaches and anybody is just having a conversation, not only with their peers, their colleagues, but also with their athletes. What is it that you want to get across to your team? How do you hold your line with your team, meaning that the emotional side? And most of that is just, first of all, sitting in the launch with them, you know, getting to know them, and then kind of rooting back to a familiar story that I might have done, not so good or good, and then we start to engage in some conversation and just simple conversation. And then it makes the coach feel a little bit more relaxed and soon enough they start to open up. And then we talk about, well, what do you see here? And maybe how do you break that down? And how do you articulate that? And what is it that you're trying to get across? You want to get more out of them or you want them to pay attention. And it's not about the yelling. Trust me, every coach I've known, not every, but a handful were a bunch of yellers, including myself. I was definitely a yeller and a screamer. And my father had a very stern voice, never screamed, looked you in the eye. And it wasn't until my first summer in 08 that I went to teach the U19 Dev Camp. And I took my father's advice and I did not yell all summer. I was stern, those girls were, just with me all the way through the summer when I had to discipline and I brought that back to my home program and I never looked back. I, did, I finally realized how effective it can be. And so I think those are the other parts, like, you know, just having that kind of different kind of level of conversation. And it just, when you're human and you have that vulnerability, they want to open up and have that conversation with them. And then it, then it leads into, the technical eye. Well, what do you see? How would you break that down? Um, the training. Well, why are you doing this? Now, how about this? Or, you know, the rest period, you know, is more better. Um, how do athletes utilize their time when they're at practice? Um, reminding that we are high school, we have to have fun. Yeah. You know, all those little things. So. And certainly at that time with how they're using that time at practice and how they're structuring that time. I think that's Absolutely. missing a lot with the young coaches because you know they have their their idea command of what they want to achieve and then kind of you know what they say is like everyone has a plan until you get hit you know in boxing yeah. and it's the same thing in coaching. It's like and I remember when I started out, um, I was at Michigan State you know when I first started my career and I remember breaking down practice into anywhere from one to five minute sections, you know, and trying to think through how long is it going to take me to communicate this, how long is it going to take to do a demonstrated drill, and just really laying out that practice plan, you know, on the minutes, at least to the five minute section, so I had an idea of what was happening and how it was progressing, and then it was very easy for me, if there were things that came up that were unexpected, to just say, all right, I can kind of tweak that, drop yeah. out that five minute section, hop into this, and I think that that's something that, you know, a teacher in the education system, there's a lot of lot of guidance there in terms of how to set up, you know, a lesson plan. You know, and I, that doesn't necessarily come into the coaching. You did say that the lesson plan, and I think that's really important because one of the things I observe, not only the communication aspect of how they communicate with their coaches and their colleagues, but how organized are they? When they get in the launch, do they have their safety equipment? Do they have their tools? Do they know how to get their boats organized? Are they, can they run an organized practice, keeping everybody together, communicating with everybody and, you know, staying, keeping everybody in line? And those are some really big areas of one, <clears throat> do they know what the lesson of the day is? You have to be adaptable and flexible, things happen. But overall, do you have a pretty good idea of what the lesson of the day is? And are you organized keeping your crews together? I think, if anything, those are the areas that I've been able to help these young coaches do are manage a practice, run a practice, and keep everything in line. And as a teacher, you're exactly right. Part of my curriculum was I had to put together a lesson plan. I had to teach the lesson skill breakdown. I had to do it verbally. Then I had to have an assessment on, written on paper. So all of those things kind of came into play. And when I was teaching at San Francisco City College, it was the same way. You have a syllabus, it's the lesson plan. 
So the adaptability and the flexibility are very, very important. However, knowing how to come in with a plan, knowing how to run a practice, and then communicating with your athletes. Listen, I think those are the most three important things before you're talking about how fast you want to go and can you put your blade in and out of the water. Thank you.